What do these four resin printers have in common? Well, they all have brand new prints on them that need to be washed and cured. Today, we test the Anycubic Wash and Cure Station to see if it's any good. My name's Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. So recently, I purchased the Anycubic Wash and Cure Station because I wanted to give it a test. I've seen a whole bunch of videos on this and people really like it or they really don't and I thought I would check it out for myself. Normally, my prints go through like a three-step process that I got from Robbie Mack out there in our community. Now, I really like the process he gave me, but it is time-consuming and I tell you what, if this makes things easier with resin prints, I'm for it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this thing unboxed, we're gonna check it out, and we're gonna clean some prints to see how it does. So let's get to it. I did purchase this with my own money, and I've been told that this is the updated version. So as you can see, I pulled it straight out of the box. It was in plastic and a whole bunch of styrofoam, and it came very well packed. I pulled the top off the styrofoam. Right on the top of the package, we have a user manual, a uh, couple of Allen wrenches, and it looks like an extra bearing. And we have the power brick. If I take this styrofoam up off the top, it exposes the cover, which looks very similar to our Photon Zero here. A matter of fact, they match. This is the front of the machine. It says any cubic across the top, and it's still in a bunch of styrofoam. I'm gonna lift this piece up off here, and that should take our lid off, and we'll open that in one second. This is the base here, so I'm gonna lift this, and I'm just gonna take off the styrofoam from the base. This is what we get. Uh, the base is pretty large. I really like the blue here. Looks like it's pretty well built. It's all metal. Uh, your, your UV lights are here, and I can't wait to get into this thing. This is the lid, and it looks like it houses a bunch of stuff on the inside. So I take the lid out of the styrofoam. There's another wedge of styrofoam to hold the contents of the bucket in. We're gonna take the bucket off of this styrofoam base, and that looks to be it for the styrofoam. In the Tupperware tub here, we have a lid that locks down. We have the turntable. It looks like the hanging bracket here. We have a basket, and it looks like we weren't done with the styrofoam. There's one more piece, and inside of the bucket, we have a propeller. So this is everything that came in the box. We have the lid, the uh, actual machine, and the base station here. As you can see, it has touch controls on the front, and these are the line of UV lights that'll cure it. It came with a hanger and the basket, the bucket, the spinner, or the plate that spins. Of course, the instruction manual, some Allen wrenches and an extra bearing, and the power supply. We're ready to get this thing going. I've got it plugged in. I'm gonna set the bucket right on the top. We are gonna fill it with IPA. So I got the IPA in and we're ready to get cleaning. So I grabbed the Photon S. We're gonna loosen the plate here and we're gonna slide it off. We're gonna slide it onto the wash and cure station and I'm gonna tighten it down like that. So I took the whole build plate, put it on the adjustable arm and I lowered it into the IPA. So you wanna be careful that you don't hit your print down on the blade. So make sure you do your adjustments of this arm before you turn the machine on. So I've taken and put the cover on now, and I'm gonna turn the wash and cure station on. Then the default is actually on cure. So we wanna press this button to wash. Once we have that on wash on here, we have two, four, or six minutes. We're gonna stick with two minutes, and we're gonna hit play and that should kick our wash and cure station on. As you can see, it's running, the prop is spinning, and it's causing quite a great current out here in the IPA. That leads me to believe that it's really spinning the IPA around the model inside there. So as you can see, it has stopped, uh, and this was just a two minute clean, so we're gonna check it out and see how the print looks after two minutes. Now that it's done, I'm gonna take the cover off, and I'm going to lift the build plate out of the IPA. Let it drain for a second here. Now I'm gonna take the build surface off of the mount. So after two minutes, I pulled the build surface off and I've just set it here on the silicone. And I wanted to show you that this model looks extremely clean. It doesn't look like there's any extra resin between those little holes that I can see. Um, it just looks very good. Remember this will do two, four or six minutes and I did choose two minutes 
on this model. So as you can see, the model looks very good all the way around. It did a very good job cleaning in that two minutes. I probably would do it on four minutes consistently, but wanted to see what two minutes would do. I'm using the AnyCubic Green on this model in case you're wondering. So the next thing I'm gonna put on is the build plate that's on the AnyCubic Photon. And as you can see, there are 15 miniature Aria Dragons on this build plate. So we're gonna put that in and see how it does. The build plate with the 15 miniature Aria Dragons is inside of here. And I use the Arion Clear Resin on these. So it's actually really hard to see them through the IPA. So I got the build plate off. I did four minutes on this one and it looks great. Every single one of these little miniature Aria Dragons look very clean. Uh, they're clear, so it's pretty hard to film, but they really do look great. So here's one of the Aria Dragons spinning now. It looks absolutely awesome very clean and the print came out awesome with that Arion clear resin. So this is by AnyCubic and it should work with any of the AnyCubic printers that are small enough to fit in here. So I noticed the AnyCubic Photon Zero attaches different than the photons. As you can see, it attaches by this screw and the build plate goes in here and then this tightens down. That's different because the photons actually have that screw on the top of the build plate. Uh, the issue with that is, is if I take this build surface off and I try to attach it to our adjustable mount, there's nothing holding this in here. So it's just loose. There's nothing to tighten it down to. So I'm not sure we can actually use the Photon Zero with something actually on the bed inside the wash and cure station unless we come up with some way to tighten that down. As we talked about earlier, the Photon Zero's build plate can't clip on to the adjustable mount. So what we need to do is cure this, and this is the first test print I did with that AnyCubic Photon Zero. Take this, and I have a glove on, and we can put it in the basket. Then we can take our basket, we can set it right down in, and it holds onto right back here, and we can start our wash cycle now. With the basket in, it sits right down by those blades, and anything that's big enough not to fall through can go in there. Uh, I do have it on the two minute cycle, so right now it's slowing down. It'll start spinning the other way now after half the cycle is done. It's really doing a great job, and as long as your print is big enough not to fall through the basket, you can always use the basket. So I started thinking, and I do believe we could actually use the Photon Zero plate. We just have to take apart this adjustable mount. In here, you see how this backs? If we unscrew this, that will come out. Then we could use this plate that comes with it, put that underneath, screw this down into it, and then you could take your Photon Zero plate It'll slide right into here, like this. You can tighten this down and you can use it just like this. Um, one thing about this is you will not be able to lower it so it's not adjustable. But if you have something taller on the plate, you could actually use it like that if you wanted to. So the cycle ended, I put it on the spinner so you could see how clean this got. Again, this is the Arion Clear Resin and it prints very good so far. This torture test came out great from AnyCubic. That's the uh, test print that comes on it. And it looks really good. I wanna check out the Creality LD002R and that's what we have right here. Now the Creality build plate is not meant to go on uh, the AnyCubic adjustable base right here. But on Thingiverse, I found this print and I'll put it in the description below. So it should adapt the plate so we can use it like this with the Creality LD002R build surface. So let's try. As you can see, I did an Eiffel Tower on this one. It is very clogged up in all the little spaces in here. And I'm hoping that this will clean that out. All right, so I have our adapter on. Uh, it does sit in the orientation like this. So it kind of looks like a T on the front here. I'm gonna take the build surface off of the Creality LD002R printer, and I'm going to push it onto the printed piece. It fit great, as you can see here. So let's set that in to our AnyCubic wash and cure station, and just watch, because you do not want the Eiffel Tower to hit the blades. So I got it in here, and as you can see, it is just 
deep enough. I can see the resin just kind of falling off because there's quite a bit of residual resin on that Eiffel Tower. We are using the Anycubic white resin on the Eiffel Tower. Let's do two minutes to see how good a job two minutes does. So I've added more IPA, it's above the build surface now and we are rocking and rolling, it's cleaning the print. We did a two minute cycle on the Eiffel Tower from the Creality LD002R printer. If I zoom in, you can actually see how good uh, the Anycubic Wash and Cure Station cleaned out between all of these little pieces here. All of this had resin in it before, and it did a really good job in two minutes cleaning that out. If you look right here, you can see how great of job it did getting resin out of that little uh, railing area and all those little pieces in there. I'm sure if I would have left this in here for four or six minutes, it'd have probably been a little bit better, but I tell you what, for two minutes, this did a heck of a job. Now what we wanna do is start curing. So I went ahead and pulled the uh, paper off the top of the acrylic and put the uh, curing plate down and it just sits right down into the center right here. So we're gonna put some prints on this and see how it cures. So I got all 15 of the miniature Arias in that uh, Arion clear resin on the curing plate. So I pressed cure, so the uh, cure light is on there. So I got the cover on and we're about to start the curing process on the 15 Aria Dragons. As you can see, when I started it, it jerked a little and knocked a bunch of them over. So I'm gonna stop it and try this again. So you can see the UV lights are on in the background. I have the cover on, and as you can see, all of the dragons are standing up currently, but I did have to move most of them to the center area, otherwise they kept falling over. I have the timer on for six minutes. We're gonna let it run for six minutes and then see how the curing did. As you can see, the lights go quite high on that back tower, so if you have a tall print, that's really gonna help. It's nice that the uh, cover here will block the UV rays from you, so it won't damage you from watching the prints cure because it should filter out through that cover. So they turned out very well. They're all cured and they look good. Uh, I think this thing did a really good job curing these miniature Aria dragons. So now you can see we have the Eiffel Tower in the curing cycle. Uh, I am doing six minutes on this one just to make sure it gets uh, fully cured. So this shows the Eiffel Tower after it's done cured. It went through six minutes of curing. And it's something interesting to note. It appears to have yellowed a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure if I cured it too long or what's going on, but if I turn it this way and you look, that this looks much whiter here than this side does. So I'm not sure why it did that. Um, if you look at this shot here, which shows the Eiffel Tower when it went on before it was cured, and then you look back at this one, which shows it done, you clearly see that it went a little yellow, uh, maybe an off-white now instead of white. I'm not sure why it's doing that. So I have the Anycubic torture test from the Photon Zero in. We're gonna give it a two minute curing and let's see uh, if it yellows at all after two minutes. I only chose two minutes because I thought maybe I over cured it with six minutes on that Eiffel Tower. So as you see, after two minutes, it does look like it has yellowed a little bit. I'm not sure, maybe it's just my eyes, but um, if you look at this picture here, which shows it before it cured, and then you look at this one, um, it definitely does not look as clear as it was. So after this one was washed, I pulled all the uh, supports off quick and I'm gonna cure this one on a two minute cycle. So we have it in curing. Uh, it's gonna go for two minutes and we'll see what it looks like when it's done. So as it spins around on the turntable here, uh, you know, I think it looks great. I just did two minutes on this one. I might do another two minutes on it to see if it affects it at all. But overall, this model looks amazing. It washed really good. Uh, and it cured very well too. It is hollow and the bottom dried as well, which is awesome. Next, I thought I'd cure one of my Maker Coins that I did print in resin. Uh, this is the special Patreon coin that uh, patrons will get soon for joining my Patreon campaign. Uh, this is something that was designed by Tyler West, and I really like this coin. It's kind of hard to see, but let's see how it cures. So this is what it looks like while it's curing. I only did the two-minute cycle because I think I overexposed some of the other prints, causing them to yellow. So I think the uh, Edutech Patreon Maker Coin turned out pretty dang good. It cured very well, and it looks pretty awesome in resin. So just for argument's sake, I took another Maker Coin, which is this one right here, which is just the Edutech Maker Coin, and I put this one in for six minutes in the Wash and Cure Station. This one's the Patreon Coin, and I only did this one for two minutes. 
As you can see, this one yellowed significantly more. It's kind of hard to show on the camera, but it is very much more yellow, especially around the sides there. Um, you can kind of tell both of them did yellow, and I didn't notice this until I put it next to something that's really white. What I found is happening is it, if I over cure, it starts to yellow pretty bad. Um, this one's not terrible. This one is pretty, pretty yellow compared to it. And especially side by side, you can tell that this one's much more yellow than that one. So something to think about when you are curing your resins, uh, there's a two, a four, and a six minute timer. Start with two minutes, and if you think that you've washed your model very well, maybe only put it in there for one minute and then hit stop and check it. Because these UV lights seem very powerful, sometimes you may not need to go the full two minutes or you'll get yellowing. So just be careful, maybe experiment a little. This does not mean I don't like the AnyCubic wash and cure station. What it means is I learned something and I need to be careful when I'm curing my resin. All right, so we've seen some prints come off of the four resin printers that are behind me. We've put them through the wash cycle and the cure cycle in the AnyCubic wash and cure station. We actually had some mixed results. It turns out that I was over curing some of the resins and it was causing it to yellow. And that's something I wanna make sure that you guys don't do. The lowest cure time on this machine is two minutes and in some cases that might be too much. So if you have a clear or a white, what you wanna do is Put it in there and maybe time out a minute and see how it looks. Make sure it's cured, of course, but one minute or one and a half minutes might be all it needs to cure your resin because this is pretty powerful. With all that being said, this thing does a fantastic job in washing and curing resin models. All the models will be in the description below as far as where you can find them to print them. And also I'll link the resins I used in the description below as well. My overall thoughts on the machine after using it for a couple days, as you can tell I'm in a different shirt than when I started, uh, is that this thing is pretty awesome. It definitely helps with cutting down the time and cleaning up the mess of resin washing and curing. It's awesome that you can take the build plate throw it right on this machine and cure your models on that build plate if you want to. If you have taller models or real small ones, you can actually take them out and put them in the basket that's included. I really like these options and I really think that this is a must have, especially for beginners in resin printing. I know it's a little bit pricey, but I tell you what, it is worth every penny. The other method I used took longer and used a lot more stuff than just this one station. And I really think if you're low on space or for general ease of use, that the AnyCubic washing cure station is an awesome choice. I hope you guys learned something today. And as always, keep printing. Hey everybody, thanks for popping in and watching the video today. If you liked the video, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button below and click that little bell if you wanna get notifications anytime we go live for the Monday Night Hot Makes stream or any videos that go live on this channel. Have you guys seen this video?